shot. Cooper caught it somehow. Cowboys OT is brought to you by Geico. 85 years of savings and service. Sleep Number, the Sleep Number 360 smart bed, helps everyone from parents to pros improve their performance through quality sleep. Only at a Sleep Number store. And NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Flashbacks to Herschel Walker in 1987 as the Dallas Cowboys win an instant classic on the road in New England at Gillette Stadium 35 to 29. The final score they win it in overtime with a 35 yard touchdown pitch and catch. Dak Prescott wins it with a throw to C.D. Lamb and the Cowboys are five and one entering the bye week in 2021. Welcome in to Cowboys OT presented by Globe Life well, in the Globe Life studios. I should say alongside Barry Church, Nate Newton and Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans where we're still reeling after a Cowboys win by six in overtime their first OT game of the year and in turn their first win in OT this season. Isaiah I mean, there's a lot of places you can start with, but really it just boils down to the Cowboys made the plays when they needed to. They made the plays when they needed to, but the one word that stands out to me is character. Um, you saw the character of this team. You saw the fight. You saw the things that they had to overcome, the, the, the bad plays, right, the, the penalties. Oh, my goodness, the penalties. You had guys like Tyron Smith that had to go out with an injury that seemingly was going to put him out. The guy stepped up. Ty Naseki came in and did his, did his work until he came back into the game. Listen up. All the playmakers stepped up. All the backups stepped up. This was a whole team effort. It showed exactly who we are, and we're some fighters along with great players. T was still, man, great job. Coach Philman, you got these guys rolling. Like my man here said, a few guys went out, a few guys came in the offensive line. They jailed at the biggest moments to make sure these star players, these skilled guys, be able to do what they had to do. Great job, O-line. Yeah, I'm still in shock right now. I'm still in shock. I mean, this is one of the best games I've seen all year. Like you guys said, this team is extremely deep. I mean, we had guys get injured left and right, guys stepped up, and there was no drop off in play right there. So to me, this team is deep. This defense started to pick it up in the second half. And I still, Kyle, I still don't understand how <laughs> CeeDee Lamb was that open in overtime like that. It still just blows my mind. Well, let's relive the whole thing because this was not an easy win by any stretch of the imagination for the Cowboys. We start in the second quarter. Cowboys already down by seven. And who steps up? Randy Gregory, a big-time strip sack of Mac Jones to get the football back and put the Cowboys in a good position on offense. Yeah, Randy Gregory came off the edge here. He was coming up like a madman. The play before that, there was a holding penalty, and he wanted to come out there and just simply run through the chest of Mac Jones. It's a good turnover right there. Great play for the Cowboys. The fumble set up a 30-yard field goal as Dak Prescott throws this one near side and had that one knocked away by J.C. Jackson. It was, or excuse me, Jonathan Jones was the one that knocked that football away. Then we go to a blocked punt. On the ensuing drive, Luke Gifford was able to get through. Yeah, Luke Gifford did a great job right here. He got skinny through the gap, extended the arms, great block, was able to scoop it up, and then we got to the red zone. The Cowboys get down to the goal line and go to the goal from the one-yard line. Seemingly, it looks like Dak Prescott gets in here, Isaiah, but upon further review, or actually no review, he did not get in. Yeah, no, he didn't get in in that third down. It appeared like it was, but we don't have enough camera angles. But we come right back with the same play. Unfortunately, he tries to dive over the top. And a great play right here. Great play by their middle linebacker, knocking the ball out right on the edge there. We're one inch away. Unfortunately, turnover for the Cowboys. That would have put the Cowboys in front heading into the halftime break. Instead, New England led at the break 14 to 10 on one of the first drives of the third quarter. How about this? A pass interference call against J.C. Jackson on C.D. Lamb. Was this, do you agree with this oh, call? No, not at all. This is extremely ticky tacky. I mean, these guys are both arm fighting right there. Well, it went the Cowboys way, though. It did indeed, and the Cowboys took advantage on the next play. C.D. Lamb in the back of the end zone with a little toe drag swag. His first touchdown of the night, and that's a bit of foreshadowing for you there. Now, a couple plays later, you look at Tony Pollard running off the left side here, and Tyron Smith gets rolled up on with that ankle. He left the ball game, but actually came back later on, and that's impre or excuse me, that is important to remember once we get into the overtime of this football game. Then Dak Prescott rolling out left with 
Three minutes left in the fourth quarter. Third down and 12, but he only gets 11 here, Isaiah. Yeah, he only got 11, but he was doing a great job of putting his team in position to be able to convert on plays. Unfortunately, as you see here, didn't happen. They did not go for it on fourth down and one, and Greg Zerline misses a 51-yard field goal. At that point, it seemed like all was lost for the Cowboys, but who saves the day? It's Trayvon Diggs' Superman strikes again. Oh, once again, tips and overthrows. What'd you say, Isaiah? Gotta get those. And he did. Took it right to the house. Mac Jones can't believe it, but hey, another score for the good guys. Seventh interception of the year and unbelievable from Trayvon Diggs. He was able to strike and it put the Cowboys up 26 to 21 after he houses his second pick six of the season. But what do the Patriots do in return? They go right back at them. 75 yards to board and all of a sudden the Patriots are back up top and they get the two point conversion to go up by three. Yeah, they went on a double move right here, but that was a terrible angle by the free safety KZ. You got to go to the man instead of the ball. Great catch by Bourne 75 yards later Patriots touchdown. So the Cowboys one last chance to get a field goal fourth down and four. How about this play from Cedric Wilson who elevates on the far sideline to reel it in for the first down and it allowed Greg Zerline to knock through this 40 nine yard field goal with 20 seconds left sending this one into OT the Cowboys defense gets a stop and then the in the drive Dak Prescott on the run finds CD Lamb and from 35 yards out he walks into the end zone and the Cowboys improved to five and one in dramatic fashion to say the least it was one of the best games like Barry said of the year and we've got plenty more to come here on Cowboys OT we'll have player sound we'll have plays break or broken down by Isaiah Stanback. plenty more to come stick with us the Cowboys win it 35 29 over the New England Patriots. This segment is brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. Instant classic from Gillette Stadium in New England. Cowboys come out on top 35-29 and the offense had themselves a day. In terms of the yardage, in terms of the stats, now luckily they come out on top, but they dominated time of possession. Almost 40 minutes Ooh. on offense. And then you look at the plays, the first downs, the yardage. I mean, it was a dominant performance from the offense. You just have to convert in the red zone, and that's something this New England's defense has been so good at all year long. Coming into this game, the Patriots had only given up 50% scoring in the red zone, and Kellen Moore had a couple struggles there, but were able to get it done with a win in overtime. Isaiah, I start with you. What were your thoughts on the offense? I think the offense played well. Um, obviously, there are some things that some hiccups that we've had in previous games that I felt we were not going to be able to overcome when we face tough opponents. We saw some of those things kind of creep back up today. The fumble on the goal line, right? The interception, things of those nature, of that nature. Um, we have to sure these things up. But overall, today, we did a great job. Over 500 yards again of offense. Dak did a heck of a job maneuvering, getting the ball where it needed to be, and also extending drives later on in that game when things really got tight. You know, we knew going in, the game that in the middle of our offensive line it would be tested and it was early in the game that it was getting tested over and over again but they persevered they kept playing they kept playing good ball and in the end you gave it to Dak and he did what he needed to do yeah it's not about how you start it's about how you finish and Dak Prescott went out there in his first half made a couple mistakes couple air throws threw a pick in the end zone tried to reach over the goal line got it knocked out but then we fast forward to that second half that defense started to step up Dak started to hit his targets on point and the playmakers CD Lamb um, Dalton Schultz Cooper out there they started making plays for their quarterback and we see the rest is history as Dallas Cowboys were able to walk away with a victory it really turned into one of those pick your poison type oh. games defensively for New England I mean it got to the point where they were running man they were running zone they just kind of didn't really settle in because the offense kept them off balance for the majority of that second half now Isaiah when you look at it from a grand scheme of things this was about as much as the Cowboys have been tested physically I mean injuries you talk about the the pressure off the edge what did you think about the way they responded I felt like we I felt we were like we fought I felt like this is a big challenge physically for us these boys are big these boys are big and they're physical and we saw early on they were pretty dominant up front our offensive line was struggling a little bit Biotis was getting challenged because of size uh, but guys fought back uh, we obviously had uh, Tyron go down we had KZ go out for a minute as well um, again, the word for the day is character because these guys didn't just stay out the game and say, oh, the next man can handle it. These guys went to the doctors and said, hey, figure it out, take me up, do whatever you got to do so I can get back out there and compete for my team. I mean, when you look at this here, man, we was like, what, 12, 
penalties for 115 yards. We was probably about 60 or 70 yards over our normal average, man. And this team did that because they was confusing on defense in the up, up front and stuff like that. So when these guys figured it out and got into that uh, overtime, they had it settled. And the play, play, like you said, the playmakers made the plays and did what they had to do. Yeah, the, the sequence for me that kind of changed things around and showed me that the Cowboys are, are fighters right now is that early on portion when they were stopped fourth and that fourth down with like I think one yard left they were stopped New England goes in there and scores an early touchdown how did they respond they came right back and marched down the field scored a touchdown with Dak Prescott it just shows the character and the moxie of this crew and I think the Cowboys may be for real this year yeah you look deeper into the game too I mean you, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned it in the first quarter we saw that early on and the answer was certainly there but it was really late in the game you got your defensive big big play from Trayvon Diggs what does your offense do well they set up a field goal later on after the defense lets you down and play later so there was that punch counter punch that the Cowboys had to once again deal with they've only had to deal with it a couple times this year True. but probably this was as much as they've been tested early on when we come back here on Cowboys OT Isaiah Stanback takes to the big board and we break down a couple of the key plays in the Cowboys 35 29 win over New England this segment was brought to you by Ashley Home Store the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to Cowboys OT following a big time overtime win over the New England Patriots. The Dallas Cowboys now 5-1 and one. we've got Isaiah staying back to tell you how it happened here on the big board. Let's start off with Randy Gregory he had a couple of sacks in this ball game and a couple key points as well. Yeah, Randy Gregory showed up big for us tonight. We've been looking for a defensive end, obviously, with, with, with uh, D-Law being out this year. We've needed somebody to step up and be a playmaker in times where games are tough like this. And use this, here's a play right here early on in the, or sorry, later on in the game where he was had, actually had a holding call earlier, and he wanted to come after him. He said, forget that. I'm about to get this dog on a sack <laughs> for my team. I want you guys to watch how he plays with leverage. He's a large human being, but he doesn't just rely on that. He gets bursts off the ball. He sinks his hips and uses his long arms and drives right through right here. Boom. You guys will see him. He's going to run right through the face of this left tackle. This dude right here stands zero chance. Let's go ahead and run this play real quick. Boom. Ball off the back. Look at the leverage. Boom. Boom. Right wow. back one more time. Goodness gracious. Oh, my gosh. Right here, as you guys see, he comes off the ball hot. Pause it right there. He sinks his hips. Look at the feet of this, this guy right here. They are terrible. That means he is getting thrown off. Look how he gets underneath the pads right there of him. He comes right through, runs right through the back of good old Mac Jones, and here we go. Another sack for the man. I mean, he was standing straight up as, yeah. as a left tackle there, and Gregory was underneath him, had full leverage underneath. Now you can say the same thing for a couple different guys, and you talk about inside leverage. Trayvon Diggs finds his way inside a receiver more often than not, but this interception, his second pick six of the year, seventh pick of the year, yeah. he was actually over the top. Yeah, absolutely. This is over the top, and obviously this happened off a tip ball, and as BC and I always say, tips and overthrows, you got to get those, but this play happened in film study. This didn't just happen on the field. This happened because Trayvon Diggs has been in his bag and he's been watching a lot of film. I want you guys to see. Right now, you guys are seeing this thing man up, man up, okay? All these guys are playing man. All right, right up here, playing man. We have one free safety over the top. I want you guys to see his eyes as he is locked in right here on Mac Jones. He is watching his step. As soon as he sees that he takes a in a shotgun, he, he sits back on his back leg on that first snap. He's going to drive the ball. He knows it's a three-step drop if he was under center. So right here off the bat, he knows there's only so many routes that these guys can run. He does process of elimination. So as the ball snapped, watch his eyes again. Go ahead. Let's run it. Boom. Pause right there. As soon as he sees that Mac Jones get the ball from the gun, he knows he is driving on the ball right there. Easy play for him. Tip ball. He's going to catch that every single time. Take it the opposite way. Let's take a look at it from the other angle as well. Trayvon Diggs is one of these guys that's not afraid to take a couple of risks in the secondary as well. No, not at all. So run it back from here real quick. I apologize. Right here. Boom. Look at him. Before the ball's even snapped, look where his eyes at. Where his eyes. Normally, when a, when a quarterback is under center and you're throwing a slant route, the quarterback's going to take a three-step drop. All right, he's going to go one, two, three. That's what the go. That's what the cornerbacks are going to count. But when you're in a shotgun, you're already at your three-step three-step drop depth. So all he's looking for is this plant, this plant step right here by Mac Jones. As soon as he catches the ball right here, boom, that right there. That is all the indication that he needs to drive on this route. His eyes are locked in. He knows that he is coming out hot on the ball. This slant route coming across. So he is jumping that route. He misses the ball. 
Guess what? He's going to take advantage of those because it's tips and overthrows. Just lurking in the distance, waiting for a mistake to be made, and then Trayvon Diggs is able to capitalize. You can say the same thing about C.D. Lamb and what he did all day long, up over 100 yards receiving and 35 big yards to close it out. Yeah, right here at the end of the game, again, this is, all goes back to film study. What are they trying to do right now? Right here in the middle of the box, these guys are trying to take away the run. They do not want to allow us to run the ball right here in this in this first and ten situation. And look at the safeties. The safety is right here. And he is walking his way down. All CD is looking at right now, you see his eyes right here. He's looking in. Look how many guys are in the box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten guys in the box. So with there's ten guys at the box, who can guard him if he goes back this way? Absolutely nobody. So an early acknowledgement right there, being able to identify what's going on, boom, pause it right there. As soon as that play action occurs, okay? Man, we got Zeke going across. We have Dak coming out. CD knows right now, this man is right here is the only guy who can cover me. And this man right here has outside leverage. He's gonna take this up and take this right over the top of that. Dak does a great job of acknowledging that safety is down. Let's take advantage of it. Let's play catch and let's win this ball game. You see him throw the hand up over there as Moss. Old school Moss right there, boom. Boom, run it all the way down the sideline, and he's going to hold it out for him because that's the candy that he can't get. Do you think that's a check at the line of scrimmage where Dak Prescott looked at that and said, hey, this is something that we could exploit, or is that called from the sideline? That's, that's, just, that's a play call straight from up top. That's, that's Kellen Moore calling that play, and those guys being down too aggressive down in the box. We knew that's something that we could take advantage of because they are so aggressive against stopping the run. So that was the CD just luring these guys to sleep. As soon as that safety came down, take them over the top. And it ends the ball game 35-29. The Cowboys win it when we come back here on Cowboys OT. Mike McCarthy hits the podium and talks about his team's 5-1 and one start to the season heading into the bye week here on Cowboys OT. Rolling along here on Cowboys OT following the Cowboys 35-29 win over the New England Patriots. Let's go back out to Gillette Stadium where Mike McCarthy is speaking to the media. Okay, David. Earlier talking about having to fight through adversity and come through. There was certainly a lot of adversity for your fight team in today's game. Yeah, this is uh, this is an excellent win for us. Uh, you know, we knew coming in here, you know, you know competing against uh, Coach Bilicek and his team and just all the, you know, um, just all the things that you, you need to do um, to win these kind of games. So um, this is probably as, as, as fine as a complimentary win uh, we've had in my time here. Um, you know, I thought the, you know, uh, the offense was extremely productive, uh, you know, throughout the day. You know, defense had some great runs there, you know, the takeaways. And the special teams obviously had some big plays in, you know, in the return game and the block punt. But... You know, I, I've always felt that, you know, overtime wins, close wins at the end of the game, these are these are games you can really build off of. Uh, we also, you know, talked offensively throughout the week where, you know, it, you know to play against this defense, you're, you know, your third, fourth, fifth options were going to have to come up big. And I, and I thought Dak did a tremendous job distributing the ball today. And, uh, you know, I think all five receivers, the, you know, both tight ends, you know, the backs, I mean, everybody touched the ball in a passing game and, and we were able to stay – you know, stay after with a, with a health, healthy run game. So um, we knew it was going to be a challenge. Uh, we wanted to be aggressive. You know, that was that was our mindset coming in here. Um, so this is an excellent win for us. How would you characterize uh, all the big plays that CD Lamb made today? Uh, I thought he was on fire, playing with great confidence. You know, you see last week, and it just you know clearly went to another level this week. So um, CD was huge today. You know, not only with the you know with the route running and the catching, but the you know yards after catching, particularly yards after contact. So, uh, I thought CD had a huge day for us. You were talking about the, the offense being productive. I think you had a chance to score on your last five possessions. The only mm -hmm. thing that broke that was the missed field goal. So, can you talk about Dak a little more specifically, uh, just the game he had and managing it after that rough first half? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it in, in just you know every game's different. Every every stadium's different. Um, you know, I'm a you know big. Believer, in, you know, from an emphasis, uh, per, you know, an emphasis, emphasis perspective about ebb and flow of the game. You know, it was a kind of a quicker clock, slower spots. That I mean, the point I'm going here is just the herky jerkiness, the, the penalties, the big penalties. We had, we had a number of major, major penalties, and, and I just thought Dak did a tremendous job uh, with pace of operation and just really just keeping our our whole, you know, the whole the whole system of play entry and just kept charging, kept charging, kept playing, and um, you know, that's that's a big part of our success. 
uh, just, you know, his approach and his efficiency. So, uh, you know, can't say enough about Dak Prescott, just the way that ball was being distributed and, you know, the calmness and the confidence he had in the pocket. Um, I, I thought, you know, I thought our pass protection was, was excellent. Uh, but, the, you know, we knew this was going to be a dog fight. We knew this was going to be a huge challenge coming in here. And, um, you know, I, and I really do, uh, you know, you, you need these kind of wins, you know, during the course of a season. So I, I think this one could definitely pay forward for us. Well, I mean, I, I think you, you touched on all. Of them. I mean, the big plays. You know, you know I think the, you know the energy never, you know, never dropped off. Uh, you know, we, we had we had swings of momentum. They they made big plays. You know, they're, they're you knew they're going to be tough. You knew they're going to be physical. You knew they're going to be disciplined. Uh, you knew they were going to challenge us schematically, and uh, and we saw all that. And you know, tremendous respect uh, for their whole their whole operation here. Uh, they, they do it. They do it. You know, what they've done the last two decades is. Unprecedented. So, um, and that's you know kind of the way, you know, you got you have to approach you know any game, but especially coming up here. You heard it there from Mike McCarthy. The fight of this team, the Cardiac Cowboys, Ooh, as you may. Okay. The way okay. that they were able to come back and win this football game is certainly something that is very positive heading into the future. You know this team's talented. You've mm -hmm. seen that already. You know they're built on both sides of the ball, but it's games like this, Nate, that you can build a championship run behind. Oh, definitely, you know, and I like how Coach McCarthy said that Dak threw the ball to a number of guys, eight to be exact, each one on multiple times except one, and that was Blake Jordan. That was a touchdown. So Dak, Coach McCarthy, Kellen Moore, they kept fighting regardless of how, how the game went. Cardiac Cowboys came out on top. <laughs> Without a doubt. I mean, the fight that this team is showing right now, it's remarkable. I mean, 12 penalties for 115 yards, a couple mistakes in the first half with the turnovers. That would have buried these Cowboys in the past. Now, it's just like Kyle said earlier. It's counter punches, counter punches, and they're coming back with more and more moxie. These guys are here to stay. This offense is probably one of the most prolific offenses I've ever seen in the Cowboys uniform in this defense. They continually take the football away. That's a recipe for success. 35 plus points for the fourth straight game for that Cowboys offense. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it though. There were a lot of mistakes early on. You have to clean that up. You got to clean that up. I mean, a lot of things were biting us in the butt out there. Dak trying to reach over for the goal line right there. Got it knocked out. We've seen him do that hundreds of times before and the result was a touchdown. This time ended up biting him in the butt a little bit. We've got to clean those little things up. The little sloppy holes, the little horse collars here and there. That'll cost us versus better teams. But right now, this Cowboys team is rolling. And it was a very, very physical game up front. <laughs> I mean, a lot of guys banged up on both sides of the ball both Patriots and Cowboys saw uh, some injuries popping up because of how much punching there was going on between the two Ezekiel Elliott one of those guys who really got a lot of the brute force we hear from him when we return with more Cowboys OT right after the break. Ezekiel Elliott with just under 70 yards rushing and over 100 yards from scrimmage in the win, but it was a very physical game for the ground game of the Dallas Cowboys. Here's what he had to say on the win. Tell me about that one. I mean, just the ups and downs, the, the craziness. I mean, what, what is it like to win a game like that? Uh, we definitely needed that one uh, going into the bye week. Um, like you said, the ups and downs, uh, the way our, our team stayed neutral, uh, the way we, we fought. Um, I'm proud of these guys. What, what did y'all see there in that, in that final drive when you got the, you know, it, clock is not really a big issue. What, what are you thinking there? Just, hey, let's just take our time, go down and score a field goal? Or? No, we won six. Uh, <laughs> we, we already didn't play good enough in the red zone, and, and uh, we needed six. We wanted to go get six. I, I know we could have kicked the field goal, but we wanted to go get six. <laughs> What, uh, take us back to that fourth and fourth down series. There were the four down stops. I mean, what, what was happening there? I know you had a couple of plays there, and then of course Dak didn't get in on two sneaks. Is um, I mean, their defense did a hell of a job today. Their front uh, was tough. It definitely was tough, especially in that in that situation. Uh, but uh, I mean, we got we got to figure out a way to get it in there. I thought we got in there. Uh, the refs thought different. Um, but, you know, that was kind of the story tonight. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. I know I don't want to get you in trouble, but, I mean, just with, with, the, with the reps, when, game, when calls are going against you like that, how tough is it to keep your composure and not say anything and not get any more penalties? Uh, it's really tough. It's hard. Um, but, I mean, there's no excuse for that. That's ridiculous, you know, the way they called that game tonight. Um, so, I mean, but 
at least we were able to overcome, you know, the Patriots and the, the Zebras. <laughs> How do you feel like they played you in this game? There was a lot of talk. Who is Belichick going to try to take away? Do you feel like they were focusing on the run? It felt like there was some stacked boxes, at least early in the game. Uh, I think they definitely were focused on the run. Um, but, you know, that came out. I don't know how much he threw for it. Probably around 400. A little more. CD yeah. made some big plays. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, they took care of business. All right. This, you get to the bye week. I mean, uh, he's, like you said, he's a much-needed win. He won five in a row. How important is it to, to get to the, the bye and get some rest here? Do you feel like you're going to stop momentum, or do you feel like, hey, we need this rest? No, I think it's a good point. I think we need, we need some rest, uh, you know. Hopefully we'll get a couple guys back that are injured. And um, But, I mean, take care. We got to go ahead and clean this game up, uh, rest, get ready uh, to go to Minnesota, right? Yeah, Two weeks. Right. That's right. Yeah. All right, appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Zeke. you. Awesome. Have a good, one. good game, Ben. Zeke, very open about needing a little bit of rest because, that, like we said going into it, that was a physical ball game, and one of which with a lot of controversy kind of scattered throughout it. What did you think about some of the calls, no calls, and this, that, in between from the officials? Yeah, I, being a former player in New England, you're not going to get those calls. Uh, you just, it's just not going to happen. I can tell you that, unfortunately. Uh, you would think that the referee's going to call it evenly regardless of the week. That's not the case. Uh, but, you know, to the point that Zeke made, you know, those guys, they overcame it, right? They overcame it the third down uh, quarterback sneak that wasn't a uh, touchdown um, obviously they, they overcame that play and then they came back the next play and then they fumbled it right but what did they have to do they had to fight through that adversity to come back put themselves in a situation to score points and ultimately go, get the victory and that's where your coaches wasn't phased so your players wasn't phased and your veteran players mostly wasn't phased they just came back and did what they had to do it and speaking on Zeke right quick like you see games where he's just had gash and holes. Well, this week, this week right here, you saw where Zeke was very physical. He made physical and he runs and he finished falling forward. So, hey, good job there. And like he was told in Nick Eatman on the interview, by the way, he was asked that same question. It looked like there were favorable boxes for New England. I mean, they were selling out to stop the run. Did you agree with that and what you saw, Nate? A hundred percent. You know, we talked earlier in the pregame that hey, this is how it would be, you know, but we, we thought we would uh, check off. But a lot of times they just ran right into it in the face of adversity and came out on the winning end a lot of times. He averaged 4.1 yards a game. Yeah, sometimes you just got to grind it out. We knew that these guys were going to be stout. We knew they were large. We knew they were well, uh, well coached and that they were disciplined. They were going to be in their gaps. The only way that we, which we were going to move these guys off the ball was going to be on the outside. Sometimes it's gritty. Ultimately, it didn't matter. It was very <laughs> gritty. The Cowboys do come out on top. And a big reason for that were key plays from the defense at a couple different moments in the second half. Randy Gregory had a big play in the first half. We hear from what Randy had to say following the 35-29 win. Welcome back to Cowboys OT following a 35-29 win for the Cowboys over the Patriots. Their first win in New England since 1987. And stop me if you've heard this before. The Cowboys defense bend, don't break. They had two turnovers, two takeaways again in the win. Here's what Randy Gregory had to say after he forced one of those two turnovers. Randy, can you start by talking about that sequence where you, you know, they, they brought it back? Play in the end zone, they scored because of holding you, and then you came right back with the mm -hmm. with the, just how what, what that did to where you were in that game and how it kind of helped turn things. Uh, I mean, I was you know I was getting real frustrated around that time, um, and I I just felt like. Honestly, I felt like their their old line couldn't block me or block any of us as long as they didn't um, chip us at least on the ends, and they did a lot of that and. Um, I don't know, man. I just it's it was a good play. It changed the momentum. I feel like. Um, need more plays like that, you know. Do you feel like you might play your best football when you're ticked off if you get into a really bad? Game? I usually do, you know, and I, I know there's like a fine line. Sometimes I have to be warned <clears throat> from the coaches and on the field from the refs, uh, just not taking it too far. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like when I get pissed off, I talk a little bit of some shit. You know, I, I tend to play a little bit better, and um, so you know, last few games I've been trying to do that. I think it kind of helps me lock in, you know. Um, I mean, look, he's he's a good young quarterback. I think they had a good game plan as far as trying to protect him. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we got to do a better job as far as getting to the quarterback and developing a better rush plan. Um, you know, mid game, uh, I think a lot of times we had a good plan, we just didn't go out there and execute it the right way. So he was able to pick us apart um, a few times out there. 
Um, but uh, just like any other quarterback in the league, you know, you get in front of them, knock them off their spot, hit them, uh, rush them, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, their their accuracy tends to go down. So. Do you have more power than people think and realize? You tell me. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, look, I, I what four sacks on a year, and two of those came on, um, you know, bull rushes. So. Um, yeah, I think I throw people off sometimes when I do that. Uh, I really feel like I need to do better as far as uh, edge rushing. I think I rely too much on my, my power now, um, speed to power. So I, I think I need to do better as far as um, early on giving them power and then you know transitioning to edge rushes or counter moves throughout the course of the game. Obviously, it was kind of hard, like I said, with them chipping um, almost every play. Um, but you know you got to work past that. <coughs> How emotional? Yeah. Very emotional. I think, you know, we were obviously emotional during the game. Um, you know, we speak about uh, staying neutral a lot, and that was big. You know, I think uh, a couple times we, you know, kind of got out of place with that aspect, and uh, we were able to dial it back a little bit and kind of lock back in. So uh, I think that's that's why we were able to fight to the, to the end and get that win, you know? This game means something, though. This epic play series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think we needed a, a, a tough win like this. You know, I think uh, we expected them to play tough. Um, we just had to out hit them, out play them. Um, and uh, there were times where I felt like we did, and there were times I felt like we did. You know, it was really a war out there. Um, but it, it was a good job as, of us finishing um, the game. It really was. Great. You had a, that one kind of clean sack where you had a clean shot. Mm-hmm. Um, next gen stats that you had over 13 miles an hour on that play. Really? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I tell myself whenever I have a clean shot like that, I need to, to go after the ball, and I, and I never do. Uh, I really want to get better as far as not just getting to the quarterback, but obviously causing a sack and a fumble and, um, you know, get the ball back for our offense. Uh, luckily, I was able to do that. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I just kind of I have tunnel vision. Uh, there was a couple plays earlier in the game where I felt like I was going to get there, and he just didn't hold it long enough. But uh, – yeah, I don't know. I was I, I kind of knew what play was coming. I knew it was going to be a pass. Uh, I was lined up in a three tech, I think, and I just gave him a jab inside, and he just bit on it. You know. You mentioned the four sacks, but you've drawn at least four holding penalties mm-hmm. this season, and the one that you drew today with yeah. the touchdown off the board. Can yeah. you walk us through everything from you remember your your specific rush on that mm-hmm. play, and then just your understanding of that was a touchdown. Oh, I got the penalty. Like uh-huh. how that. Well, I mean, I'm starting to take pride in those holding calls. You know, it feels like I'm getting them every game. Um, you know, obviously, I wish they were they were worth more than just you know a penalty. You can get a sack and get on the box score with that end. But uh, yeah, it was good. You know, we got a, a score off the board for them. Uh, I think I was lined up outside and ran like a game or a stunt or something. I went inside, kind of got hung up on him. I tried to rip free, and he just wouldn't let go. Um, you know, I, I think it was a poorly called game by the refs, if I want to be honest. Um, but, you know, you got to fight through it. You know, we only worry about ourselves, and, and that's what we did. Luckily, we came out the win. We have another tally in the overcoming the refs, overcoming adversity column in terms of post-game press conference. Randy Gregory just said it there, Ezekiel Elliott a little bit early on. But as we push past that, Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, I'm Kyle Yeomans. I mean, this is a game defensively where you needed the big play to turn up. Randy Gregory had one in the first half, forcing the fumble, the strip sack of Mac Jones, but it was Trayvon Diggs late with the pick six that ultimately got the Cowboys back in and woke them up a little bit in order to get it to overtime. What did you think about the defense in general? Uh, the defense in general, I think they played pretty well. Uh, I think, you know, we talk about how our playmakers have to be able to step up in big games. This was a big game. This was a very tightly uh, tight game. It was, it was very competitive. Uh, so when you're in those kind of games, you need something to turn the tide, especially when you're away, uh, when you're playing in New England and, and the crowd's getting crazy. That's probably the loudest I've ever heard in New England, uh, by the way, even in the playoff games that I've been there. Wow. And these guys were going, uh, you know, Gregory obviously just talked about how he had tunnel vision. He was mad. You saw it. But he didn't take it out in the form of trying to have a bad penalty. He took it out in the form of going and getting a sack and forcing a turnover. And then you got Diggs going out there being Johnny on the spot and being in the hip pocket whenever that receiver chose not to catch the ball. So 
obviously these guys are taking advantage of opportunities and we have to continue to do that. Yeah, I think this defense overall, they played pretty well. Um, I think in that first half, they were a little sleep. You know, uh, Patriots were able to run run it down their throats for those first two scores. But in the once that halftime switch, it kind of a light switch kind of went off in their head a little bit. And they held the Patriots, I think, to 39s and the 39 yards in the next four drafts. So it was a lot of three and outs going on there. They kind of woke up and uh, they were able to take the ball away, which we needed for this game. Hats goes off to that secondary trade digs and Randy Gregory as well. He played a big part. Yeah, big time players make big time plays in big time situations. And that's exactly what the Cowboys big time defensive players <laughs> did today. Let's take a look at some of the final stats. Now, once again, it was a bend, don't break mentality. They were still up over 330 yards allowed against the Patriots in an offense that really is pitter pattered to start the season through the first six weeks. But hey, couple of sacks, couple of takeaways, including the interception and the forced fumbles, and they had another defensive touchdown. I mean, yes. you talk about now 10 straight games with multiple takeaways, and you were able to score defensively. Huge for the Cowboys in their 35-29 win over New England. When we come back on Cowboys OT, we hear from C.D. Lamb, the hero and the walk-off when we return. One of the best games in C.D. Lamb's young NFL career, the second-year wide receiver with nine receptions, close to 150 yards and two touchdowns, including the game winner in overtime. Here's what Lamb had to say at the podium. Can you talk about the, the winning touchdown or what that play was and just coming back so much? Uh, simple play action over out. Uh, it wasn't nothing fancy. Um, it was kind of blown coverage, and I saw, I saw it early, so I kind of just – Bring it to open field, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, hoping that Dak saw me and he did. Is that supposed to be a Schultz play initially? Yeah, 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 initially, yeah. Uh, and then Dak said uh guy folded back on Schultz, so he held the ball. Uh, if, he, if he didn't fold on him, he was definitely going to, uh, you know, give, give Schultz the ball and he was going to get the first down. But obviously that wasn't the case. And I was wide open, so. Did you talk about our feeling catching the ball? Oh, no, nah, that was an unbelievable feeling, um, especially just I was expecting someone to just pop up behind me and then there was no one um, and like within three yards to my left. He was kind of behind me. So when I turned around, I was actually surprised and then I just walked in. It was the best feeling ever, honestly. Have, you ever you said you a before? Have, you Have I scored? Yeah, in high school. But other than that, nah, this is my first one in the NFL, obviously. Um, don't get too many of those. Did he talk to you when you waved at him? Nah, he couldn't really say nothing. Um, you know, it was a competitive game. He was going back and forth. But I think I got the best of that matchup. What, what, what kind of confidence do y'all have in Dak on a game-winning drive like that? And when you're going out in overtime, what's Dak saying to you and what's the sense? Um, it's kind of a mutual understanding, just understanding that the preparation that the coaches have given us uh, week in and week out, just preparing us for the moments like this. Uh, the team understood the situation and the assignment. And, you know, all 11 of us, we kind of came together. We knew our backs was against the wall. Um, just all we had is each other, a uh, hostile environment. We preached this over and over again, week in and week out. And then for that situation to really unfold, it was like, wow, like how we were prepared. So let's go do this. You heard it there. I mean, the best feeling ever is what he described it as with the walk-off. He hasn't had a walk-off win, walk-off touchdown since he was in high school. So, of course, CeeDee Lamb is feeling it a little bit, but you just saw, I think, even more so an emergence of a top wide receiver in the NFC East. He had a, a one big-time play after the other throughout the game. What did you think about his performance? He balled out. I mean, you see the stats right there. Obviously, stats don't always show the entire picture, nor do they again this time. But he had nine what, for 149 on uh, a, touch, a touchdown. Um, big play at the end of the game. Amazing job. I love to see the competitiveness that he had going back and forth against these DBs. What I'm learning is he's growing up with four eyes, man. He's getting consistent. I think he had maybe one drop, man, so during this game right here. But he had like nine catches. So, hey, I like his consistency of making a big play to be able to read the defense like he, like Dak saw it. So, that's a great thing. Cowboys entered the game with one of the top four duos in the NFL in terms of receiver, including Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb. Big reason for that has been Dak Prescott. We hear from QB1 and wrap things up when we come back on Cowboys OT. Cowboys OT was brought to you by Geico. 85 years of savings and service. And by NFL Game Pass, you'll never miss a game again.
Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. 35-29 in an instant classic from Gillette Stadium. The Cowboys come out on top in a very offensive yet physical football game in week six. And they enter the bye week with a five and one record. And with all three NFC East foes losing here in week six, they hold a three game lead over anybody else in the division going into an early bye week. Wrapping things up here on Cowboys OT, Barry Church, Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans, where there is a bit of breaking news here post game as Dak Prescott heads to the podium. He is in a walking boot on his right calf. Apparently he was injured on the final play, the throw to CD Lamb. He is being reevaluated earlier in the week. The Cowboys heading into a bye week, which is a great time for that. But let's hear from QB one after the six point overtime win. Let's get the elephant in the room. Let's knock. Let's knock it out. You start by talking about just all the adversity this group overcame today going in and, and you making the play with Lamb in that moment to, to win it. Yeah, I mean, just I think today just showed our resiliency uh, time and time again. Um, Defense making plays. Obviously, they came out their first two series and got some touchdowns. And for them to dig in, uh, really step up and make plays. For the defense to get an interception return in a moment we need it. Uh, for the offense to bite itself in the in the butt all game long. Uh, my turnover is down in the red zone. I'm missing out on points. But uh, just to have the chance to, to tie the game, to have a chance to go win the game, uh, and just able to do that, um, I think it just speaks to, to the resiliency of this bunch and this team and the bond that we've created and knowing that uh, we're not going to give up and all we need is a chance. And I think that that showed tonight. Those don't look like Jordans. Can you tell us what the These are Jordans. No, the one on your right. <laughs> <laughs> one on your right. Browns. Browns. Might get Jordan to make one of these. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, something we'll figure out. Uh, I figured we, we weren't playing for a week, so I'd give you guys something to talk about and speculate on this time. So uh, there you go. Did it happen on the throw, or how could you tell what? Yeah, the last throw. Uh, yeah, it just came down funny, and that's what it was. And as I said, someone will get checked out. I'll be fine. can promise you that. Uh, great timing going into the bye week, but as I said, y'all can, y'all can have fun with it this week. So just talk about the emotions of that play. You, you hit the game in one of your celebrations, and then you got a pain in your leg. Yeah, I was just like, no way. Uh, life keeps throwing punches, and I'm going to keep throwing them back. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's part of it. It's part of this game. It's a physical game we play. Um, as I said, I'll be fine. Uh, I've got a lot of confidence in myself, the medical team. And um, as I said, I mean, I feel, I feel good. Obviously, this is precaution. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, just more so thinking about the touchdown. It doesn't hurt as bad, obviously, when you, uh, when you score and you win the game. So um, all that's a plus. And uh, credit to CD right there and just the play call. Uh, just for us to, to get in that to get in that moment and to be able to go score and, and capitalize on that great call by Kellen. So Dak Prescott all smiles after the game and a big reason for that is the win. But Cowboys Nation a little bit on egg, edge with the quarterback. Of course, the ankle injury last year, the shoulder and then now into a calf strain. Is this something to worry about Isaiah? I don't believe so. I mean, obviously, anytime you have your QB1 showing up with a boot at the press conference, it's not something that you want to see. <laughs> um, but, you know, to his point, you know, you see his spirits. Obviously, he's not just in good spirits because of the win. But if it was something that was very that he felt was very serious, he wouldn't be smiling like that. Uh, so I feel like, obviously, with the training staff that he's had, with, that we have currently, and also with, with the, the time that they spent together in this mm -hmm. offseason, I'm, really, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's fully confident that he's going to be okay. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it's too serious right now. Um, like you said, he seemed to be in good spirits smiling about it, joking it with the media as well. So I don't think it's that serious, but I will say this. It's a, it's a good thing that thing happened at the last play of the game. And CD was able to walk off with the uh, easy touchdown winner because we, 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 we did not want to see this <laughs> offense go out there without that Prescott. So good thing for a bye week, very strategically timed. Where does this win rank above the ones or uh, among the ones in terms of the five the Cowboys have had so far? This is hands down the, the, the best game and is the most important game. They needed to see the resilience of their team as you keep hearing that work come up and they needed to see the tenacity of these guys to be able to overcome adversity in all forms. Yeah, I thought this was one of the, the most impressive victories they had. I mean, this team they going against was extremely disciplined out there. They fought them tooth and nail and they were huge up front. So the run game um, didn't get as much going as we thought it would get going. But overall, this is a great win for the Dallas Cowboys and get a great win 
over Bill Belichick. Yeah, first win over Bill Belichick since he took over as the head coach for the Patriots. That's a, one of a ton of different streaks coming to an end. It's the first Cowboys win over the Patriots since 1996 and the first win on the road against New England since Herschel Walker walked it in from 60 yards out in overtime in 1987. That's going to do it for us here on Cowboys OT. Once again, the Cowboys win it 35 29 in New England and go into the bye week at 5-1. For Isaiah, Nate, Barry, I'm Kyle Yeoman. So long. We'll see you in a couple weeks.